Well, it's certainly a day of understanding legal pronouncements. And joining me to discuss the federal government's declaration on Amotekun is a legal practitioner, Mr. Jitsi Ogunye. Thanks a lot for joining us on News at 10. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. All right. And in, in the last 24 hours, of course, we've been looking at the Constitution again. Where do you stand on the reasons the federal government has given? Well, let me be very straightforward and direct. The federal government in a statement, or the Attorney General, or the Federation in a statement, states that no state in the Federation, singly or uh, in a group of states, has the legal right or competence to set up a paramilitary force to defend Nigeria or any uh, constituent part uh, thereof. Um, if that's the reason the Attorney General or the Federation has given, I will tell you that it's not in consonance with the intention of the Amotekun that has just been declared. Amotekun was not set up, from what we've read, to defend the Southwest. So it's not defending Nigeria or the constituent part of Nigeria. It's set up to defend the life and property of human beings, of people. Nobody's talking about defending a territory here. And so there seems to be a disconnect between the reason they tell uh, the mission of Amoteku and what the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation is talking about. If Amoteku was set up to defend the territory of the Southwest against other parts of the country or defend Nigeria against an external aggressor, you can then be saying they're taking over the job of the military or the Nigerian forces. And let me quickly say that, look, life and property are very invaluable things. Uh, in this country, we've, not, we've seen so many things happen in the last one year or so, you know, going to organized banditry, kidnapping and all that. Uh, judges have been kidnapped. Uh, judges of the Court of Appeal have been kidnapped. Policemen, police officers, up to the rank of commissioner of police have been kidnapped. Yeah, sorry and to when people get short, kidnapped, yeah. Yeah. some Unsolicited advice even comes from the police, and I'm saying this on international television that we should deal. The one happened to one of uh, the premium time staff that was kidnapped recently. That you better deal. Those people who kidnapped him are very dangerous people. So deal with them and pay the ransom. So Nigeria are that helpless. And I'm saying that government and citizens have a right to self defense. Yes, you've talked about what the objective of Amotekun is exactly. and the semantics. But what about what the AGF says about not carrying him along? Do you, was everybody carried along? Is that the challenge? My presumption you know? was that the federal government was carried along. By, because they are in the same party, you know, largely, except a state uh, or your state that is in an opposition uh, party. So uh, my presumption was that they had a discussion, they had an understanding, and that it gave them the green light to go ahead and launch uh, Amotekun. So if uh, the AGF is now saying that it's not carried along, as distinct from the federal government of Nigeria not being carried along, because I understand that the AGF is not the federal government of Nigeria. So if he's saying that personally it's not being carried along, then I would urge the governor to go and carry him along. <laughs> because life is very important. I'm telling you, you know, it's not a funny thing. So, but if this is all about fear, I would say that once again, the Nigerian government has missed an opportunity to experiment the idea of having a federalized policy in the country, whereby you have a regional arrangement that can help. By the way, those who are saying that this thing is inimical to Nigeria, you don't need to have state police and all that. The EGBA unity government, EGBA union government, set up a police force, a bad police in 1905. And from that, you then started having a bad police or your police, native authority police forces all over Nigeria until 1970. So for 65 years, this existed in this country. Many people didn't know this. So the police force that we have now, this current arrangement has not even lasted for 65 years. So I, I think that we should think outside the box and re-engineer the security arrangement in Nigeria All for right, the protection please. of lives and property. Because, again, as we also say, uh, the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. So says uh, Section 14.2b 
of the Constitution. All right, put yeah, by the legal you. practitioner there, Mr. Jitsi Ogunye. Thanks right. for sharing those thoughts with us on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you.